Hey everybody, it's Allison here. Um, sorry it's been a while since I've filmed. I've not been feeling good, but it is uh, the end of May and the garden couldn't look any better. Let's take a tour. So here is the perennial bed and the irises are just amazing this year. They were even more bloomed out a couple days ago. But these are my favorite, the dark purple. Well, I always say that. I say everything's my favorite, so sorry. Look at these beauties. Amazing. They're so thick this year. Um, after they bloom, we're going to come through and um, divide them because we want to share and then spread some on the outer edges of the yard too. And then the uh, rose bush finally started blooming a little bit. Not quite as much as last year. So interesting. That's the Jupiter's beard back there. Let me show you these irises over here. So this is my my second um, perennial bed I've been trying to establish, but even though it's just a few feet away from the first one, the soil over here isn't nearly as good. It's full of tree roots and um, they just overall don't do as well. However, these sherbet irises are like 10 times better this year than they were last year. Just look at them and look how tall they are. Um, I mean, these are waist high. They're really interesting. And each stalk has so many blooms. They're just fantastic. So I've come through and I've added a few things. I added um, all kinds of yarrow in the back. I divided up from other yarrow. I have a forsythia here now for my friend. And then the new rose bush is doing really well. And then back in here, there's more rutabecchia. So hopefully that'll take over when the irises die down. So I just wanted to point out um, a couple things about having a perennial bed. Uh, one thing is over the years, you'll spot um, gaps. So like this year, I planted some more cat's mint, which is what this is, beauty. Bees love it. And then um, more of the buckeyed Susan here. And then this little guy here is a tall garden flax, uh, proven winners. There's the tag. So as the iris die down, which they will, um, hopefully that will spring up and give us some more color and then we'll have color from the rose bushes. And then I did add in, this was quite a big gap here. So I put in a big rose bush. The sea holly is doing really well. And then I have in where the tulips and the daffodils were. Um, I planted the red sunflowers and then my friend just gave me some pink sunflower seeds. I've never seen a pink sunflower. Very excited about that. So I'll uh, put those in as well. Oh, let me take you over. I'm going to show you my cute little fountain setup. This is working really, really well. Isn't that beautiful? So everybody's really happy. The big deep pots are the key. Um, so even though it it'll bakes in the sun out here at the end of the day, they're staying nice and watered and everybody's growing. So a few more tips about um, establishing a perennial bed. The thing that's so great about perennials is one, they're huge um, and they come back every year. So even though I spent, you know, $10 buying a rose bush, it comes back for years after year after year. And so it's actually quite a good investment as far as um, the yard goes. And then um, a lot of things I buy very, very small. And as I mentioned, you know, the yarrow was like this big when I bought it and it was $3. And it's, you know, five years have passed. I've divided it five or six times. It's everywhere. I've given it to people. It's great. Um, uh, so start small if you're on a budget and then look for, a lot of times people will divide their um, perennials. For instance, I got tons of the irises for free um, 
and then um, I've swapped colors with other people just you know on Facebook or whatever um, that's how I got my one that's um, purple and white up at the front that blooms really really early um, so that's a great idea and a lot of things you can divide up come through and divide up like honestly if I had another place for another perennial bed I could divide almost all of these um, except for maybe the roses and the butterfly bush and I could create a whole new bed for free um, so just start small and uh, maybe think about your color theme I like a lot of bright colors obviously I love purple and pink my whole yard is full of purple it's definitely my favorite um, and so I try to I like really vivid bright colors I have a lot of this um, blue salvia here sorry can you see it and then um, the rose bush was a bonus this is a red knockout rose um, this thing is the gift that keeps on giving it is just covered with blooms um, it blooms almost all summer long um, I do deadhead the spent blooms but it is just fabulous and then um, like I was saying before as the years go on you'll notice empty spots go ahead and you know plunk down a plant or two in there and then you can also plant in annuals um, anywhere you want in here so, kind of get the best of both worlds. So, another thing about perennial beds or any flower bed is think about where you're going to put it in the yard. So, and a lot of people will um, line their fence lines with flowers, which is fine. Um, I wish that we had started out with flowering bushes, but at the time it wasn't in the budget. As far as placement goes, um, I wanted the flowers to be really close to us. This is our our barbecue. Um, we sit here on the patio. And so I placed the uh, perennial bed right here. And it brings the flowers right to you. It's like decoration for every party. Uh, we even had a wedding here. And it brings in the butterflies and the hummingbirds and everything is just right here where we sit. It's just so beautiful. And so I don't have like little kids or anything that need it to be close, you know, to the back door or anything like that. So um, we just put this great big perennial bed in here and it is just magical. So many of the things are quite tall in the summer. Um, the yarrow is as tall as me. The butterfly bush is taller than me. Um, the roses are huge as you can see, the, this guy, even though I pruned him, he's probably eight feet tall already and it's May. And then um, as the beautiful like May springy flowers die back, um, there's sunflowers that seed themselves through here. So what that does is it actually creates shade for where we're sitting. So not only is it beautiful and there's flowers right here next to us, um, it does provide a little bit of shade and besides the trees and everything. So it's just beautiful. And then since we're not the biggest fans of grass, you know, we tried several times to establish another bed. But anyway, those are my thoughts about, you know, put your beautiful things right where you have access to them um, instead of maybe far away from you back along the fence. I just love the May garden. It is full of birds and flowers and the veggies are coming up. There's a ton of weeding this time of year though, so that's always tough. But yeah, things are coming along. Um, it's been, sorry about my junk pile there. It's been not as warm at night as you would think. Um, it's not freezing or anything, but veggies kind of like it when it's over 50 at night. And I think that's a lot of the reason why a lot of things are just kind of sitting here in the ground and they're not like springing to life. It was a lot warmer last year. Um, but I noticed over the next week or so that the daytime and nighttime temps are going to go way up. So um, hopefully we'll get a lot more green growth on there. All right, so here are all the green beans. Doing well on the arch. I did have to spray these. These were good eaten. That is a chicken. But these were getting eaten by bugs as well. So I used that BT spray. Looks really well for our yard, see? That's bug damage. So 
these guys are coming along. Purple flowers look really good. And the uh, potatoes look awesome. She come through and put some straw over the tops of the lawn so you can barely see the soil. So, I don't know. That great. The cucumbers. Barely alive. I might just go buy some cucumbers and replace these. I don't know. Look, random potato coming out. Might as well. Let that guy grow. Goats want to say hi. Hey, everybody. These are those um, butternut squash. Doing okay. Not that great. Uh, these are zucchini. They're coming up fine. And then finally my tomatoes are starting to look alive. Some flowers. These guys even have um, a couple blossoms on them. So we got a good, good drenching thunderstorm. Let's see? It's good. Blossom. And that helps a lot. Plants love the nitrogen that comes down from real rain. Onions look amazing. Giant so far coming up. I'm letting that guy live. But uh, I did pull up quite a few. And look at this. The celery came back. It looks pretty good. Oh, you know what? That one that might not be celery. Hmm. I might pull that up. That might be a weed. Got a bonus kale plant. Green's bed looking great. Now that it's covered and the uh, birds can't get it, chickens. Sorry about the lattice work, but look how great these are. We've been eating salads, some kale, collards. So, um, one thing I did to kind of help the garden along is I came through one night before it rained. Uh, two or three days before and I just hand watered everything. I soaked, I flooded the beds um, to give them a bump up and it really seemed to help. I think that the beds have too much nitrogen in them um, from the compost I got from the city and I think they're kind of suffering from that but now they got the good deep flood soak and then the thunderstorm that truly drenched the yard. And um, everything seems to look a lot better. So here's my garlic come along really well. However, you see that it's starting to flower. So we're gonna come through and pick these off. You don't want these to bloom. When you pick off the, uh, you can eat these too, by the way, if you wanted. Ooh, smells like garlic. You, you don't want them to bloom. It does, doesn't help with the heading of the garlic. Yeah, check out the Dollar Tree Garden. It's looking really, really, really good. Getting lots of lettuce and everything off of this. Uh, we got a few radishes. And these are turnips. Look at the carrots. They're growing. Looking great. There are beets back there. You can eat the greens of the beets. Cilantro. Beautiful lettuce. This is the romaine, and this is um, the, a curly leaf variety. And then peppers aren't doing much. I don't think this is going to be a great pepper year. But green beans are coming up. I don't know if you can see it right here. It's the butternut squash. I had to reseed that because it didn't come up initially. I need to. Do a little bit of work in here. And then still, you know, I reseeded the yellow squash, the summer squash, and it hasn't come up either time. All the green beans popped up. They're looking good, so. I mean, just imagine this was $6. Look at all that food. So hopefully the green beans will do well and I'll get some squash and stuff. But, oh, I don't know what's going on with that yellow squash maybe the seeds are dead yes check out the broccoli 
Oh, we're getting broccoli. This is exciting. There's one. There's another one. There's one here. Oh, interesting. That doesn't look very good. Huh. What's going on with that? Oh, I need to fertilize this too. I was going to fertilize it with fish emulsion. Sorry about the sound. We live in a city. And look at the peas. They're coming along. Finally, good grief. So after these come up, I'm going to plant some pumpkin. And hopefully they'll have time to make pumpkins. Oh, and let me show you another little project I did. So here is the fig tree. It's got leaves. Doing all right. It's pretty funny. It was just a stick there forever. <laughs> and then this is the uh, hibiscus. I've been keeping this watered really well. Um, a couple times a week I come out here. And then here are some lilies popping up. These are really, really tall. And then there's another hibiscus. So hopefully this is once it's mature, it will just be a wall of flowers. And then we're going to come along later and put in more irises and stuff. I got one, but we can put in quite a few more. But yeah, so that should be really pretty. up the whole head or anything. Um, just harvesting leaves and then the plant can continue to grow. That's the curly lettuce. Isn't that beautiful? Not bad, not bad. We got some cilantro. Make some salsa later. Just one radish. We've been eating them so there's not too many left. All these beautiful greens. This is the Swiss chard. And then two kinds of lettuce and a little bit of um, beet greens. So beautiful. Hey girls. What are you doing? Get me a drink. What's up, cookies? This is the one that likes to get some fresh breath. He's got to come see. <laughs> it's a uh, total lie that goats will eat anything. They'll taste a lot of things, take a nibble, but they're actually super picky eaters. But anyway, see, this guy doesn't like it. Gus, he doesn't like it. Sean likes the mint. All right, so that was the uh, late May garden. I love it, it's so pretty outside and it's not too hot yet. It's gonna get really hot next week, but right now it's perfect. And uh, just remember, you know, this time of year, it's a lot of work in the garden, but just take a few minutes and relax. I've got my uh, tea here. I'm just going to um, have a nice quiet break before I get back to work. I'm gonna sow those pink sunflowers a little bit later. So. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, you guys. Um, and if anybody has any suggestions about um, maybe balancing my soil out a little bit more because of the too much nitrogen that is out there, I was wondering maybe I could add in bone meal or something. But anyway, if you know a solution, um, let me know. The only thing I really know to do is to keep deep watering it and to flush um, all that nitrogen out. Um, uh, plants need nitrogen, but not too much. Otherwise, they just get stunted. So, anyway, thanks for coming along. Remember, life's a garden. Dig it.